know, a garden like this is so gorgeous, but I feel like I'm constantly battling things like snails and sow bugs and rabbits and, and critters. Because you are. I That's know. why it seems that way, but yeah. there's a few different things that you can do. Okay. Um, I've, I've been trying to establish a beautiful stand of zinnias. Mm -hmm, I gorgeous. planted some, some seedlings out here, okay. literally, last night, and when I came out here this morning, some oh, of them. Left. Oh yeah, there's nothing left. Something so you think is an insect that. Did well, I don't know. I need to have one of those hidden video cameras <laughs> that'll show me what what critter came and devoured this at night. It could have been a rabbit. It could have been a slug. It could have been who knows. It could okay. have been. I have a, a lot of problems with sow bugs, but there are a couple of things that you can do. I came out and I sprinkled some snail and slug bait. Okay. And this is a particularly. Oh, that's what it looks like. It's it is. A, it's like a pellet. Mm -hmm. But this is a really good variety of, of bait, Linda, because this is garden safe. It's non-toxic. It won't hurt um, your pets. And also to make these little seedlings less delectable to slugs and snails exactly. and insects. Exactly. What else can you do? Well, I like to use this 5% 7 dust. It's very non-toxic, very benign as far as insecticides go. And I'm just going to sprinkle them as soon as they germinate, Linda. I mean, when they're very, very tiny. Anytime you see a leaf that has a big uh, bite out of it, mm -hmm. seven dust is a good solution. Okay. And you have to be careful about how you water, too. You do have to be careful because with zinnias, probably more than any other annual I know, powdery mildew and rust are really problems. Okay. And, and you want to have a glorious stand of zinnias without all of that foliage looking, looking really diseased and unhealthy. So there are a couple of things you can do. One is watering at the base of the plant itself. Okay. And this is true when they're seedlings. It's also true um, when they're taller. You want to water in the morning and you want to water at the base of the plant so that that foliage is allowed to dry out during the day okay. and it doesn't have those water droplets on it mm -hmm. um, as kind of a vector for fungal infections. Right. So then you can just cut and enjoy them. They're a long lasting flower that will last not only long in your garden but as a cut flower inside well into the fall. There's a real art to watering. Well, we probably in Oklahoma couldn't survive without having an irrigation system. Yeah. But you do need to use them wisely because water is a precious resource. So what we want to do is make sure that the, our timing of watering is the most beneficial. We want to put them on very early in the morning okay. when water pressure is high, right. when the winds aren't so high and will you know, blow away all of, of our precious water that, and we don't want to lose it to evaporation. So the best thing is to water early in the morning, um, even if you need to do subsequent waterings to get a really deep penetration of your lawn surface. So you could run through this, the settings once, then run through them again. But believe me, doing it at high noon with high winds is not going to achieve the results we want. How much water? How much well, do you want to put Well, on the ideally, you want probably, it, it varies depending on what your exposure is, if you face south or if you face north, but probably um, about an inch to two inches of water a week, depending on the season and how dry it is and how desiccating those winds are, um, you want about that much water. Once a week? Once about, well, one to two inches a week, per week. Okay. which might mean that we have to water multiple times even a day. Okay. And to determine that, you can put a small container there and just see how rapidly um, the water begins to accumulate in that container. But Linda, it depends on so many things. Do you have Bermuda grass? Do you have fescue grass? Are you in full sun? Are you in full shade? I think probably learning how to water wisely and not waste water is probably one of the single most important gardening skills you can have. You know, for a lot of people, thinking that you can plant something now to enjoy the summer is kind of out of their realm of reality, but you really can, it's particularly with basil. With basil, you know, there's a lot of things we can't grow in Oklahoma, yeah. but there are some things we can <laughs> grow, and basil is one of them. And we have a long window of time because it grows so rapidly uh -huh. once the seeds germinate. And, and I would encourage people, grow it from seed. It's extremely easy to do. There are so many different varieties, Linda. And you've just thrown some seed out here, and these are already coming up? These are already coming up, but uh -huh. you can see that they're kind of congested. And it is so difficult for us to sacrifice a mm. seedling when we need to thin seedlings. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to just very, very gently divide these seedlings. Now how far apart do you really want them ideally? Well, this is a miniature variety, so I, I'm going to plant them about two to four inches apart. Now, Linda, I've got the soil moist, so see it's very friable and soft, and I'm just gently tugging. You can see the little baby oh, root yeah. system there. Mm -hmm. I'm very gently gently separating those. And then if you would 
drill just a small hole in there for me. Sure. How's that? That's good. And then I'm just going to vary again, very gently, because these are extremely tender baby roots. I'm going to put that in there. Again, this soil is moist. And very gently tap it and put it into place. And then Same how long thing. before this, uh, before you can start pulling this and enjoying it? Harvesting it. Well, actually, as soon as you have, um, let's say, the second set of true leaves, you can even use the very tiny, le tiny leaves um, in a salad or as a oh, garnish. Right. If you want to make pesto, you want the leaves to be considerably larger. Okay. But these will grow so rapidly in, in the Oklahoma sunshine. To take care of this plant over time, this is a Thai basil. I'm going to pinch this back. Oh, so you're getting rid of the flowers again. I'm getting rid of the flowers. I really don't want the flowers. So I'm going to keep that pinched back because I want it to bush out. The more I harvest, the bushier the plant is. We like that. What I don't want to do, Linda, is to go down into the really stiff, woody area mm -hmm. of the plant. Okay. I want to pinch it up at the top where it's still soft and fleshy. Perfect. And then I can take these in and I can use these in my, in my kitchen. Let's eat. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is for kids and you've got magic in your hands. Well, we're gonna do kind of a Jack and the Beanstalk theme today, Linda. Perfect. And it's not too late to do this. Okay. Because beans germinate very quickly, which is why they're good for kids, and they grow very quickly. And these are beans that you can actually eat. These are beans you can actually eat. This okay. variety is called Trionfo Violetto. Okay. And I like it because the flowers that it puts out are a beautiful lavender color. Butterflies love them. But the beans, which are edible, are purple. Let's put these in first okay. because I'm going to demonstrate to you why we want to do that. Okay. But we're going to put these poles in. Right. And if you'll grab that yep, I got it. string. Okay, let's secure that. What about here? Uh, let's go a little bit higher. Okay. And pretty tightly. All right, got it. Okay, make sure that they're in there securely. Okay. And then let's nestle them down in there, make sure the soil is tight so that they get really good support. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant them on the outside of the pot. Okay. So the inside will remain open, we'll get good air circulation. My plant will probably eventually just reduce it down to one, but let's plant three around each pole just in case we have germination problems. Okay. Okay. And you put them in about an inch? About, put them in about an inch. Okay. Again, great for stubby little chilled <laughs> child fingers. <laughs> will work wonderfully. Okay. Then obviously I'm going to water it really, really well. Okay. Now, if I encounter problems with pests. And you will. And I will. Um, I, I want to treat them, but I don't want something um, that'll prevent us from being able to.